morning, Somerset family and students. My name is Angie Medina. I get to serve as the youth pastor at Somerset Baptist Church. And I'm so glad you're joining us today for our Sunday school lesson. If this is your first time hearing about us for the very first time, I encourage you to follow us on our Instagram at Somerset Youth. Also, we have a Facebook page, which is Somerset Baptist Church Youth. And both those social media sites will give you all the latest information of what's been going on in our youth ministry. Also, just want to personally uh, lay this out, is that if you ever are, I understand if you do not, are, are per, or if you're not a person of social media, if you don't use Instagram or Facebook, uh, possibly an email. Uh, below will be an email that, that you, if you have any questions, and if, any, any, if you're not getting any of these, um, any of our information from our, from what's going on in youth ministry, my email is down below. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to email me so I can stay in touch with you and connect with you on what's going on within our youth ministry. So today we are continuing our series that we are calling Complete in Christ. And we, what we're doing is we are studying the book of Colossians. And so we are been here for the past five weeks. This is week five. Um, I'm so, I've been so impacted by this um, series and I hope it, you feel the same way. And I encourage you that if you ever, if, you, if you're hearing this for the first time, I encourage you to go back and start from the very beginning and check out all of our resources on our YouTube channel. And that will get you all the latest information uh, of our resources, excuse me, of our Somerset series, anything that's been going on within a youth ministry, it is directly on our YouTube channel. So, as I said before, we are continuing our series and we have been studying the book of Colossians for the past five weeks. So if you have your Bibles, join me in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and we're going to be in verses 16 through 20 today. And before we get started and we dig deep into God's word, let us start with a word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for who you are, for your love and grace that you bestow upon us. I pray, Father, as we continue to face this difficult time, I pray for protection and healing upon the families, uh, those that have been exposed, those that have been impacted by COVID-19. I pray, Father, for their families. I pray that your head of protection will be upon them and that you would guide them and display your grace and compassion towards us and let us continue to set our eyes towards heaven towards you and let us rest upon your presence now lord as we dig deep into your word today i pray that your word is clearly communicated that jesus christ is highly exalted and that your people are beautifully blessed and it's your name king jesus we pray amen and amen so before we go into the main text i want to kind of reflect with you guys on some of the stuff that we've been talking about. You know, one of the main factors that I want you all to understand is this, that in order for us to fully be complete, we can attain completeness without Christ. That is set in stone, and that's why the whole purpose of this series is complete in Christ. And Paul has made that establishment with the church of uh, Colossae. That, you, that, that superior knowledge, that your efforts can never make you complete. It is only Jesus Christ that can make us, that makes us fully complete. And so we need to understand that He is the only one. There is no other person but Christ. And I just want to reflect briefly on, if you remember, we, had, we, we read Colossians 1 verses 15 and 20 and basically Paul gives us a literally he tells us who Jesus is he tells us that he is the one that he is the world revolves around Christ that he is the image right In verse 15 that he is the image of the invisible God that it is through him right it is through Him that we are saved. It is through Him that we are restored. And and I was thinking of a uh, funny story. I was actually uh, watching briefly Toy Story 2. <laughs> funny thing. And and in Toy Story 2, if those you, you, if you're a fan of Disney or not, but I mean, 
I'm a fan of Disney, but in Toy Story 2, in the movie, we see that Woody meets the 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 Woody the Woody cast of his show, and he, and he didn't even know he had a show. And you see Jesse and you know uh, Stinky Pete and Bullseye, and, and and there was there was a particular scene that I wanted to really focus on, and the, and the scene was that Woody was set he was set to go home to Andy because that was his owner, right? And and the uh, and, and uh, Stinky Pete kind of pointed out. He says, "Listen, w without you, we're not complete. We're not a full collection without you. And, and, and without you, and he says in the line, without you, we go back into storage. Because if you're not with us, we're not complete. We're not a full set. Same thing with us as Christians. Without Christ, we're not complete." You can say, oh, my job makes me complete, money makes me complete, my relationship with my boyfriend, girlfriend makes me complete. None of that would even come close to the satisfaction that can only be found in Jesus Christ. So everything revolves around Christ. That you can have everything in the world, but you won't be complete unless you are in Christ. So, with that being said, let us jump into the main text. We're going to be in Colossians chapter 2, beginning in verse 16, and we're going to end in verse 20. This is what God's Word says. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you in regard of food and drink, or a matter of a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is Christ. Let no one condemn you by delighting in ascetic practices and the worship of angels claiming access to a visionary realm. Such people are inf inflated by empty notions of their unspiritual mind. He doesn't hold on to the head from the, whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and tendons, grows with growth from God. Verse 20. If you die with Christ to the elements of this world, why do you live as if you still belong to the world? Why do you submit to regulations? Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. All these regulations refer to what is destined to perish by being used up. They are human commands and doctrines. Although these have a reputation for wisdom by promoting self-made religion, false humility, and severe treatment of the body. They are not of any value in curbing self-indulgence. So we're going to camp here for our lesson today. And so if you're taking notes, here are two points, surprisingly, right? Two points that I kind of want to point out to you guys. Something that, that as we read, this is something I, I personally really felt the Holy Spirit was just stirring my heart and saying, this is what this passage is talking about. So we're going to look at two things. So the first thing that we see is that Paul is encouraging believers to guard their walk with Christ. We see it right in the beginning of the text, right? He tells, and, and, and remember that this church is facing two sides. The gospel of Jesus Christ being preached, and Gnosticism, right? We have the gospel, Jesus, he delivers us. He is, he is he's the one that makes us complete. And Gnosticism saying, no, you, it's through your own efforts, your, your own will, your own physical being. You have the ability to find superior interior knowledge that can only come from yourself, that can only come from your efforts. So both things were still going on. And Paul deliberately tells the people right from the beginning of verse 16 he says don't fall for the customs of what other religions are saying because it wasn't just Gnosticism and the gospel being preached it was other religions other practices that was being done by the people and many believers were like well, which one do I follow and Paul deliberately says he says in the beginning, he's like, don't fall for this. Don't, don't, you know, practice these things. 
And that's something that we need to understand is that we as Christians, we shouldn't practice traditions and practice things that does not make it about Christ. So Paul encourages the church to guard their hearts. But he also, as I, as I already mentioned it a little bit, he also warns believers about the teachings that are against Jesus. And they are for a, what we call a counterfeit completion. And I want you to write that down if you're taking notes. Counterfeit completion. Now, what in the world is a com, com, uh, counterfeit completion? Like, what does that mean? That is a weird, weird, weird word. What does that mean? It basically means that it basically, it, it, so counterfeit completion is this. It looks real, right? It looks real. It looks like generic. It looks authentic. It looks real, but it's fake. And that is the definition of a counterfeit completion. So, and we're going to look at other two, two main parts, two main parts in this text that we need to understand when it comes to, um, when it comes to this. The, number one, a counterfeit completion is anything less than Jesus. We read this in verse 16 and 17. Therefore, don't let anyone judge you in regard, in regard to food and drink or in the matter of a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of what was to come. The substance is Christ. So, and so what, this, what Paul is saying is that we should not make anything less than Christ. A counterfeit completion is anything less than Christ. And what that means in the counterfeit that we face is that, oh, it's the attitude. It's the attitude that, oh, Jesus needs me. Jesus needs me to worship him. Jesus needs me to uh, give my tithe. Jesus needs me to come to church. Jesus needs my, my well-being. He needs my strength. And Paul also is speaking against a, a term legalism. It's the fact that, oh, it's, it's I, 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 Jesus, I, Jesus is depending on me. I got to do this. I got to do that. But Paul mentions at the end of verse 17 that don't practice these things. Why? Because the, all, the, the main point is the substance is Christ. Christ is the substance. And here's the beautiful picture that we need to understand, students. The thing we need to understand is that, and the beautiful thing, is that yes, you're, you may be right in some sense that he doesn't need you, but he wants to use you. You know, you see, God doesn't need us. God doesn't need me to proclaim the gospel. In fact, scripture is very clear that God basically doesn't need anybody. He himself is able to proclaim his name if he wants to. But by his grace and mercy and the people that God chose, God still uses us. You know, God still uses us to proclaim the gospel. God still uses us to leave an impact in this world. It's, not the, it's the fact that, yeah, he doesn't need you, but he wants to use you. You know, God may be calling you right now to maybe simply say a prayer to a friend, maybe encourage a friend, maybe support, maybe giving a word of encouragement to a family member in need. God can use us in a variety of ways. So a, con a counterfeit completion is anything less than Jesus. And the last point I want to mention here is that anything more than Jesus is a counterfeit completion. Now, you may be thinking, Andrew, anything less than Jesus is a counterfeit completion, but anything more than Jesus is a counterfeit completion? I'm so confused. How does that work? How is that even possible? Well, what I mean by that is this. Anything more than Jesus is a counterfeit completion. It's like, it's, it's, it's like saying that you see the cross you know, you believe that Jesus died for you. You believe that he came down to earth, he healed, he lived with no sin. 
You see what he has done. You see the miracles. You see the signs. You see his power flowing. You see his power all around you, impacting people around you. But it's the fact that, oh, but you want more of it. Now, now, hear me, hear me out when I say that it's that it's not a bad thing for to want more of God, but it's a bad thing saying that the finished work of the cross wasn't enough. It's like saying, "Oh, I believe in the cross. I believe that Jesus died, but it's not enough. I need more evidence. I need more proof. I need a sign. I need." A, a, a symbol. We're a culture that, that wants more evidence and signs to come down from heaven. We say, oh, show me a sign. Even when we go in different ridiculous, show me, show me your face on a flower tortilla. You know, reveal yourself, reveal yourself through the clouds. But the problem is this, is that you're never going to be feeling enough. You're just relying on your own strength. Because anything less of Jesus is a kind of a completion, meaning, right, is, oh, Jesus needs me. But anything more than Jesus, it's through your, oh, Jesus, he, he needs me. He, uh, he I, I need a sign. I need him to reveal himself to me. I, I need him to tell me what to do. And the result being is that you're never feeling enough. Because you're fully depending on yourself instead of God. We much rather look for signs and symbols instead of looking to God's word that is filled with promises that all that He always keeps. A couple years ago, I don't know if you're familiar with this, there was a funny article, and the article was from uh, the Babylon, the Babylon B, and I, some of the stuff is, I, I assure you, some of the stuff is fake, but other, and some is like, eh. But I'm gonna leave that up to you. But what caught my eye in this article from my, I read it for myself, and the article was this from the Babylon B. Man wants God to speak to him, but his Bible is three feet apart from him. Interesting article. But the title was one that really got me. You know, many times we want God to speak to us and we want to hear his voice. And he clearly tells us that if you just open the word, if you would just open the word that I gave you, I can speak to you. Many times our Bibles are closed and we're wandering around begging a sign from God. We're like, God, where, where are you? God, let me hear your voice. God, show me a sign. God, show me your glory. God, show me yourself. And God is saying, young man, young woman, I want to show you myself. You just got to open your Bible and I will tell you who I am. I will tell you who I made you to be. He would just open the word. Open up my word. Let my words fill your heart. Let my words penetrate your soul. Let my words be meaningful and impactful. But in our young culture, we want God to speak to us in big moments. Like recently we had Dina weekend and there are times you're like, man, I want God to speak to me again through D now. I know camp was canceled, but maybe over next year, I'm going to hear students say, oh man, I can't wait for the God to change my life through camp, to change my life through D now weekend next year, to change my life through any events next year. But God is saying, how about if I change your life now? Many times you rely on big moments just to fully see God. And God is saying, you can see me at the big moments, and you can see me in the smallest moments. You can see me every Wednesday. You can see me every Sunday. You can see me every day. Every day I am working in you. And God is telling us that he wants to speak to us now. 
He wants to speak to you now. He wants to love on you now. You know, um, we, and, and, and I conclude with this. Students, we need the light of Jesus to expose what's in our lives. Many times we are good at hiding, hiding things that we don't want God to see. Sometimes we're like, God, I don't want you to see what I really am. God, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want you to see what I really have become, what I've done. And I don't want my past to be exposed. I don't want my, 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 my mistakes to be exposed. I don't want my sin to be exposed. But God is saying, in order for me to work in your life, in order for me to impact your life, in order for me to really make you like my son, I have to expose everything inside your heart so I can, so my son can be the center of your life. And many times we are hiding from God. We pull a Jonah. We run away from God and we don't want anything to do with God. And we want to save our insecurities and save our frustrations and save our struggles for ourselves. And we say, I really want to go through this on my own. But that is never the case, students. God wants to heal you. If you remembered our, our, our D-Now theme, damaged goods, no matter how damaged you may be, God still wants to use you. God still wants to have you and make you part of his family. Don't run away from God. Don't think that what you have in your heart isn't enough for Jesus to take over. Isn't enough for Jesus to wipe clean. When Jesus meant, he meant to wipe away all sin, he really means it. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is, are we going to allow God to change us in every season? Are we going to allow God to change us in every season? Are we going to allow God to really change us, to open our hearts, to open our arms and say, God, I surrender to you. I surrender everything to you. Use me, take me as I am. Make me more like Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word. God, I thank you, Lord, for the fact that you can still use us, that you accept us, that, that no matter how high, how low our lives may be, you still deliver us. So Father, let this word sink in today. And I pray that these students watching this video will be blessed and they will be used as a vessel to share the gospel, to share what God is doing within our youth ministry. Open our hearts and expose our weaknesses, expose our struggles, and let us fully lay our struggles, lay our burdens at your feet. Lord Jesus, we love you, we thank you, and we give the honor and glory to your name because you're worthy of it all. And it's your name, King Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. I want to thank you guys for joining us for our Sunday School lesson. Don't forget that we meet every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and we're live streaming. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, which has all of our latest Sunday School lessons. And also, don't forget, also midweek uh, is also be streaming on YouTube. So with that being said, I pray this blessing upon you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his favor and countenance be upon you. And may he display to you each and every day his perfect peace. Students, you're loved, and I hope to see you soon.